What's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to go over some common questions that I get on tuning. Um, tuning is probably the number one subject that I get messaged about all the time. I know there's a lot of you out there who have your own equipment, like presses and, and you know your own little setup to shoot through paper. Uh, so I'm going to start with um, addressing a, a vertical tear. So lots of times I get questions where guys are like, man, I'm getting this tail high tear and I can't figure it out or a tail low tear. Um, and then I'll move into the horizontal tear. So starting with the vertical tear, um, we're going to start with, let's say it's a tail high tear. So there's a lot of things that can influence the vertical tail or vertical tear of an arrow through paper. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over all the, like the checkpoints that I want to start with. Um, and that's going to begin with your cam timing. So if you're not familiar with what cam timing is, uh, on all like dual cam bows, like this is my Matthews TRX 36. Um, when you put your bow in a draw board and you draw it back, the cams, the stops, the draw stops on the modules here or on the cam need to come around and hit these cables at the exact same time. If one cam is ahead of the other, meaning you know one touch <clears throat> when one is touching, the other one is open. Um, essentially, what happens is when I shoot, the cam that is open is ahead of the cam, the other cam, and it causes knock travel. Basically, it pulls your loop up or down slightly. Um, so that's the number one thing. You need to make sure that those cams are going to come around and, and touch at the exact same time. And again, this is all like where you need to start. Um, so start with getting your cam timing set dead on. Um, the next thing is going to be, um, is the arrow actually 90 degrees to your string? So a lot of people just eyeball this and you can usually get it pretty darn close. Um, but ideally, um, you'll put your bow in like a vise and use a little string level and get that bow perfectly, perfectly vertical. So I'm not, you know, my bow's not tilted forward or backwards. Um, then I'm going to put my arrow, you know, knock my arrow, set it on my rest, and you, they make a little leveling device that will actually slide over your arrow. And you need to match the level of your arrow to the level of your string in order to know that it's truly 90 degrees. In addition to that, you need to make sure that it's running right through the center of this burger hole to start. So the burger hole is this little rest, the little hole here that your rest mounts through. And on most bows, um, I can only think of maybe like a couple, like the primes, their, their burger hole is not right in the true center of the riser, but generally you still run it through the center of the burger hole to start. Um, but most bows, that's going to be the true geometric center of the riser and 90 degrees to that is going to be the true geometric center of your string. Um, for example, on, on the Hoyt bows, like the, the RX series, um, just the way that the riser is cut out and the little pad that's on there, when I eyeball it where it looks like it's 90 degrees, when I actually check it, I'm sitting about probably over an eighth of an inch tail high actually. Um, when I, when I actually level it with the string level and the level on the arrow, it appears that I'm actually sitting a little tail low, like my arrow is pointed in an upward direction slightly, but in fact, it's actually level. Um, and then the reason that it's important to go through right through the center of the burger hole there is because if, if everything is a little higher than the center, generally it's going to throw me a tail high tear. If everything is too low, generally it's going to throw a tail low tear because that, that arrow is not in the true, you know, vertex of the string. It's a little bit on one side or the other. And so that string pushes it or pulls it up or down um, because it's not in the true center. So set your cam timing, get that arrow perfectly square through the center of the riser and 90 degrees to your string, and then you're going to shoot it through paper. Um, now let's say, okay, everything's level, you know, my cam timing's on and I'm still getting a tail high tear. Well, there's a couple things you can do. Um, first, what I would say is try moving, let's say it's tail high. Um, Play with the timing of your rest cord. If you're shooting a, a limb driven rest, if I move the cord down the limb closer to the riser, it's going to speed up the timing of that rest, meaning it's going to, it's going to pick the arrow up later and it's going to drop sooner when I shoot. Um, and I don't exactly know the physics behind it, but when I move that rest, cl you know, closer down the limb, like if I move it a couple inches down the limb here, it will usually help get rid of some of that tail high tear. The second thing you can do is, you know, try dropping your loop and your rest just 
a tiny little bit. So it's still going to be level, but everything is going to be just a little bit lower in that burger hole. Now you do want to watch out with some bows. Um, the burger hole is very, very close to the shelf and you want to make sure that you're not going to get any contact when you're doing that. Um, so if that doesn't work, then I'm going to start actually playing with my loop. So I'll, I'll level everything back out. I'll leave the rest in position, but I'm actually going to either drop my knock point slightly or I can leave the knock point where it is and raise my rest slightly. And that, I know this bugs some people when everything is not perfectly 90 degrees, um, but risers have flex in them and you have to take that into account. There's not a riser on the market that has zero flex in it at full draw. And som sometimes if the top of the if the top of the riser is flexing differently than the bottom of the riser, essentially it affects the timing of your cams. So even though they may touch at the same time at full draw, when I shoot and that riser flexes differently, one cam might actually be slightly ahead of the other. Um, so it, it's not gonna affect anything accuracy-wise if your arrow is not perfectly 90 degrees. You know, if I'm tail low and I need to raise that knock point a little bit or drop my rest a little and my arrow's sitting, you know, at a, at a downward angle at rest, chances are when I get back to full draw, it's actually going to be leveled out. Um, different cam systems have different amounts of knock travel. Um, you know, I've noticed Matthews seem to be pretty dead nuts. Um, I, I very rarely are we messing with a vertical tear. When I get the cam timing set and everything is set, you know, level through the burger hole there, usually it's just a matter of getting my, uh, my horizontal tear figured out. But there are other cam systems out there that are notorious for throwing, you know, a high or a low tear even when everything is timed and leveled. So it's not hurting anything to compensate by moving that knock point up a little bit. However, there is a limit to that. You know, I don't want my arrow sitting on this bow at an angle like this. You know, it can be a little bit like a an eighth or a quarter inch high, but I don't, I don't want to have to run it like an inch or an inch and a half tail high um, in order to achieve that. Now, again, you can play around with the position of where that arrow is through the burger hole. That will help. Again, if I, if I raise everything, it's going to bring the back of the arrow up. If I lower everything, it'll bring the back of the arrow down. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do, um, if I'm still getting a bow, for example, like the Hoyt Power Max was notorious for like an inch and a half tail, hair, tail high tear, even with the knock being low at brace. Um, that cam system just had a lot of knock travel. That riser, I think, has quite a bit of flex in it. Um, now, on a Hoyt, it's, it seems backwards, but if you actually open up the top cam at full draw, so when the when you draw the bow back in the drawboard, the bottom cam will hit first and the top cam is slightly open. That will actually help alleviate a knock high tear. Now I'm not going to open it up like a half an inch, but I can open it up, you know, an eighth or three sixteenths. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to feel a super spongy wall. I'm not going to feel that like dual, like clunk clunk when I get back. Um, the wall is still going to feel pretty good to you, but it is going to help alleviate that tail high tear. Now again, that's kind of my, my last resort. Ideally, I want to keep that timing set, um, but you can play around with that. Now, the reason I kind of clarified that that was just on Hoyts is because on most two cam systems, um, if the top cam is open, it's actually going to give me a tail high tear. So if I was, you know, like on a Matthews, for example, if I'm getting a tail high tear and everything is level and I look at my cam timing and my top cam is open just a tiny little bit, I need to correct that and it's, it's crazy how how small of a, you know, an open cam will, like my top cam on a Matthews is an eighth of an inch open. That's going to be like a, you know, a half inch high tear. Um, so they're, they're pretty sensitive to that cam timing. Um, you know, Bowtex are the same way. Like the, the, they're a true dual cam. They got split yokes, top and bottom. Um, and you can really micro tune that, that timing by just putting, you know, like if I'm just a sixteenth of an inch open, I can just put like a half a twist in that yoke and it'll it'll bring that cam timing in. Um, so again, that's kind of the last thing I like to do. Now, if I'm if I've tried all that and I'm still getting let's say a tail high tear, it could be arrow spine. Um, generally speaking, you have to be way too stiff or way too weak uh, to not be able to tune that out of an arrow through paper. You're usually going to see it more on the target than you will through paper, um, but it is a possibility. So if you're you know, if you're still getting a really tail high tear and you've tried everything, you know, cut an inch off your arrows and, and try it again. Or if you have a stiffer arrow around, you know, your buddy shoots a 340 and you're shooting a 400, try his 340 and see if that brings it in. Um, so 
that's kind of all the things that I tell people to check uh, at home. And again, you know, just because my, my arrow isn't perfectly level at brace, if I'm getting a good hole with it through paper, like if I'm sitting a little bit tail high at brace here, but I'm still getting a good hole, it doesn't affect anything. Um, it, it's not gonna affect your accuracy or anything like that. that you know, some bows, that's just the way they tune. Um, also different sorts of rests, like cable driven rests, oftentimes at brace, will sit knock high even though they shoot a perfect hole through paper and that's just because that rest drops so soon that arrow actually starts starts falling so it needs to the back of the arrow essentially doesn't have any support so it starts dropping as soon as it comes off the string so you have to account for that by raising the knock point a little bit um, so that's your vertical tear now horizontal tears are much easier to correct in my opinion um, you know if you have a, a good quality bow you can usually tune a horizontal tear out of there without having to move your rest way inside or outside. Um, so on bows that have a shim system, for example, like Matthews, PSEs, Primes, um, you're going to push the cam towards the tear. So if I, I always start with just one cam. So if I'm tail, you know, ripping tail left through paper, I'm gonna swap these top hats so that the larger spacer is on the right, and the smaller spacer is on the left. So I'm pushing that cam to the left. Um, if, I'm still, if I'm still left after that, I'm gonna do the same thing to the top cam. Um, now usually there's gonna be different size, either multiple shims or, or different size shims. Like Matthews has six different sizes that, that I can play around with. Um, so if I'm still just a little bit left, I might go with a little bit smaller one on the left and a little larger one on the right until it comes in. And if it starts flip-flopping, then I'm gonna get it as close as I can with the top hats and then just micro adjust my rest, you know, 16th of an inch one way or the other. Um, you know, you wanna set, again, I always start with my rest in center shot. So on a Matthews, that's 13 sixteenths from the riser here. I think Hoyts are like seven eighths. I think Prime is seven eighths, but it's pretty easy to eyeball your center shot. You know, you just want that arrow basically coming right through the center of the grip. It's almost easier to look at it from the front of the bow than the back. Um, you know, you should see that arrow just come out perfectly centered with, with the front of your grip like that. Um, again, if I have to move my rest a little bit inside or outside, it's not the end of the world. Um, where you get into trouble is if you're not using the top hat system, let's say, and you're just trying to do it in your rest, sometimes you have to move that rest. For example, if I'm getting a tail left tear again, if I have to move my rest so far inside for a right-handed shooter that I'm getting contact on my cables, that's obviously a problem. Conversely, if I'm moving it um, the opposite direction, if I'm getting a tail right tear and I have to push my rest all the way out to the left, a lot of times what will happen is you actually end up out of uh, adjustment on your sight. Like you'll get it to shoot a bullet hole, but you can't sight in because your arrow's pointed so far over to the left here um, that you can't get your sight over far enough to actually get sighted in. On top of that, it just looks kind of weird when the rest is so far outside of center that you know your stabilizer is pointed one direction and your arrow is pointed <laughs> pointed the other. Um, but a little bit, like I said, you know, sixteenth or an eighth, one direction or the other, is not the end of the world. Um, now, on a bow like uh, that has split yokes, like some of the Bowtex or Hoyts, or there's a lot of bows out there that have split yokes on on either end of the limb here. Um, I think I've gone over this before, but you're going to Let's continue with the tail left scenario. Um, I'm, what I'm going to actually do on a bow like a Hoyt where I have one split yoke is I'm gonna put a turn into the left yoke and out of the right yoke. So I'm putting turns in the yoke of the direction that, it's, that I'm getting the tear. Um, now on a Hoyt, you want to make sure that you're doing that in and out. If I do a half in the left, I need to do a half out of the right in order to not affect my cam timing. Um, now generally, if I have to go more than like two or three twists in one direction, you're gonna start getting a lot of cam lean and you can get into the, you know, kind of the danger zone of like derailing your bow just because there's there's so much lean on that cam, it's barely in the tracks at full draw. So if that's the case, then it's most likely either, you know, you've got a lot of grip pressure going on there um, or it can be a spine issue. So for a right-handed shooter, a a weak spine is gonna show tail left through paper and a right spine is gonna show tail right. So if I've tried moving my rest around, I've tried my shims, I've tried my yokes, all that, and I'm still getting that tail left tear as a right-handed shooter, you need to try a little bit stiffer arrow. Conversely, if I'm getting you know, a, a right-hand tear and I've tried all those other things, I need to try a little bit weaker arrow. Um, 
Again, spine is something that I can usually tune out through paper, you know, shooting at like 10 or 12 feet, but you're really gonna see it in, in your groups when you're shooting. Generally, really weak arrows are gonna give you kind of a, what I call a pancake group. So they're all about the same level, but they're just spread out, you know, four to six inches at like 40 or 50 yards. Um, and a really stiff arrow is just gonna kind of be all over the place. Um, it, they, they tend to not group very well. Um, so those are kind of like the checkpoints that I always tell people to look for. Obviously there can be some other things, um, but without getting my hands on a bow and, and watching really the shooter, um, shoot the bow as well, it can be hard to diagnose some of these things. You know, if I have a death grip on that bow and I'm torquing it horribly one way or the other, it doesn't really matter what I do to the tune of the bow. It's still going to throw a nasty tear. Um, you know, it, it always surprises me that people don't bat an eye at dropping two grand on a setup, but they don't want to spend $50 in lessons to learn how to shoot it correctly. You know, you can only buy accuracy to a certain point. Um, so if, if you have a, a local coach in your area who's reputable, um, you know, especially if you're a newer shooter, I, I really, really think it's a good idea to go check out um, a lesson with them so that you know that at least you're doing everything correctly and if you're having issues it's just in your equipment. So I hope that answers some of the questions. Like I said, I get a ton of these questions on um, on tuning and it's hard to diagnose over text, but that's always where I start. You know, cam timing, is your arrow level through the burger hole, is your rest centered, um, all those sorts of things. So. If you have any more questions on this, as usual, hit me up on Instagram or hit the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, remember precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle, and I'll see you on the range.